Hi, I'm Abby Lord, and I'm here joined with Bill Curtis. He is a Kansas alum. So tell me, why KU? <laughs> why did you come here in the first place? I'm from a little town down in southeast Kansas, Independence, and uh, KU was the big school to go to. Wonderful reputation. Uh, and when I was uh, en enrolling, it was $300 for a semester. Mm -hmm. So uh, that sounds pretty good. Sounds um, and, and and it had the beautiful campus and a great reputation. So off I come on the Yellow Rick Road out of uh, southeast Kansas to stay Kansas. So that's why so you were born in you were born in Florida and then you moved to Independence. So how did that happen? Well, both my parents uh, went to Emporia State and they were from one Hope, my dad from Hope, Kansas, out near Harrington, my mother from Wayside near Independence. And um, so they were Kansans, true and true. My dad was uh, a military man in the Marine Corps. And the, he went in in 1936. The war broke out in 1940. He happened to be right in line with uh, out of the regulars. He was in aviation and uh, went to Okinawa and uh, commanded some uh, squadrons as they went into the assault, all that. And uh, so uh, they wanted to go home. After 20 years, he got tired of the regimentation of military, and they wanted to go home, and home was Kansas. So they're tried and true. So what at KU brought, like, what at KU did you do? Like, um, like activities here or just broadcasting? I did a lot. I did a lot. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, I went to one year of community college in Independence so I could play football. Um, suffered a severe injury. So the next year, sophomore, I arrived on campus. Now, there are two paths to the education that I was seeking in the journalism school. One is academic. That takes care of itself with a liberal education. The other was a hands-on, on-the-job training. And uh, it mean you're kind of like a singer. If you want to be on the air, you have to exercise your vocal cords almost every day. So I was looking for opportunities. And there were two major opportunities. One, a KUOK, student-run radio station. The other was a uh, very prestigious FM station, KANU. I think they're both still there. I was lucky enough to be chosen uh, among a couple students to work at KANU. It was a classical musical music station. So you had, uh, I had learned the languages to pronounce all the uh, introductions. And um, there was a, 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 a feeling, a culture there that broadcasting was extremely important and you should be responsible when you go into the business. It was great. Uh, I had worked a little bit for KIND, a radio station there, K, um, and Nelson Rupard was my general manager, had the same attitude, and so I've never lost it. And then one day, uh, uh, my uh, instructor, uh, Glenn Price, said, would you like to join me for a remote that we're going to be doing in Hoke Auditorium uh, for the, the last recital by an organ professor. You know, he's in his 80s and he's going to be leaving us. And I said, well, yes, it's, it was another opportunity because the, the trick is to use the university not only as a wonderful sort of mothership, but as a shopping mall. And you can go out for debate and listen to uh, com speech com competitions and hear, hear the great speakers coming in and, and enjoy the university uh, milieu especially with people, I said yes. So we off, uh, we go to uh, Hoke, and there is a radio booth that nobody would notice from below. I looked through a little square uh, to see this cavernous auditorium, 5,000 seats, where Wilt Chamberlain played his first basketball. And um, he said, I said, what do I do? I was in front of the microphone. He said, well, here's... Um, a program, introduce uh, us, what we're doing. We're going to be bringing you the concert by uh, this professor. 
And uh, the first selection will be, I've forgotten it. Uh, but sure enough, he comes out to uh, scattered applause, because after all, it's an organ recital, and uh, sits down at the organ. Uh, I introduce it, and the next thing I know is this horrible sound comes through and uh, as if he has fallen into the keyboard. Well, in fact, he had. He had a heart attack, and he died on the keys. Um, I was caught, <laughs> uh, not knowing really what to say. Fortunately, Glenn stepped in and took over, uh, and he, too, was so shocked as anybody would be. Ultimately, we threw it back to the studio, but that experience, uh, which probably no one has had since, uh, was deeply embedded in, in me. One, responsibility. Two, maintain your cool. Three, prepare yourself when you do a remote like that, because they're all important. And from that time, I measure, I can measure my entire career for 50 years. 50 years. I would always, uh, during those three years, uh, 60, um, uh, 60 to 62 through 62, until graduation, um, use the university as, as kind of a, a mothership uh, from which I was able to uh, pursue all the my interests. One of them was, uh, in addition to KNU and KUOK, part-time work, the first at uh, a top 40 radio station in Topeka. I was Tony Curtis with a K, if we may. And uh, I could stand that for about six months. Same time, same records, the first run of Elvis Presley, incidentally. And, uh, but it was so inane, I just couldn't stand it anymore. And I went across town to the only television station in town, WIBW. Mm -hmm. Well, still going to school uh, at KU, there was a 15-minute um, uh, show that KU put on, on the stage, incidentally, of Hoke, and it was um, called Scope, and and I did it, and it became sort of a, an audition of, of sorts, and I was able to use that uh, to get the job of a part-time announcer at WIBW while still going to school and commuting. Um, and then became a weatherman for a couple of years, decided to go to uh, uh, law school because I looked like a baby. And uh, <laughs> I, I thought I might as well do that. And we had mandatory uh, military service, so what, six months into the Marine Reserve there, and came out and picked up my old job. Um, I had said goodbye to KU, but always returned to the campus to, to uh, get a refresher. And uh, I was studying for the bar, oh. and a friend asked me to fill in for him doing the news at 6 o'clock on Channel 13, WIBW. And... Um, I was there when the tornado came through. Worst tornado in U.S. history. Uh, blasted its way 11 miles for uh, probably 17 minutes. Um, but uh, we were at the TV station. I was on the air. I was looking into the camera like this. Yeah. Uh, able to say, for God's sake, take cover. And we, we went for 24 hours uh, in our reporting. And from that moment I, I measure about five seconds i can go back to the the few seconds of um that experience at hoke auditorium on the ku campus uh, my career was set for 50 years in in two or three months i joined cbs news in chicago from there well i've been talking too much here i covered four of the major um trials of the century. The trial, yeah, I had the uh, pass the bar there. I had uh, Richard Speck, the killer of eight student nurses in Chicago. Charles Manson, I think you may have heard uh, of that. Uh, the conspiracy trial from the Democratic National Convention 
1969 and the convention in 68 and then Angela Davis in California and finally uh, and they wanted me to be a general assignment reporter because they don't didn't want to spend the money on a specialist I had become the specialist but I went back to become an anchor man at uh, channel two and then would swing back to a network anchor man on the morning news with Diane Sawyer in 1982. Anyway, I could go on and on. It's 50 years, but uh, it all came from the KU campus and the School of Journalism, um, keeping me on track, uh, offering uh, Bruce Linton was uh, my supervisor, uh, offering the right courses because I realized, okay, you have to know what to say and how to say it. So the how to say it came in the little uh, part-time experiences where your your dad, I went out for the debate team. We didn't have debate in the little town of Independence, Kansas. I was there with a freshman when I was a senior. God, how humiliating. But I did it because it might help and it certainly helped thinking down the line. Um, you know, participated in speech competitions and, uh, um, and and the life as much as I could. I was working too much. I really didn't have much of a life uh, going drinking beer, which is a tradition at any uh, school of higher education. Uh, why? I like to work. So what was your favorite moment here at KU? Was it just like just working? What What has been your favorite moment here at KU? During the spring, walking down Mount Orient on the on the summit there, in the most beautiful campus one can ever imagine, uh, with the the pink, either cherry blossoms or uh, crab apples, you know, falling like uh, rain down to the sidewalk. Um, the most uh, interesting, uh, you know, they they all pass. I m marched down the um, the hill with uh, a woman who is also in a, I think, a graduate class of seven at the journalism school. And when we walked down the hill past the Campanile, um, we talked. That's the only time I had talked. She became um, the first uh, correspondent for AP in Vietnam, came back and became a vice president uh, of uh, and now is is in Chicago in a retired uh, situation. Uh, so I remember that interview for some reason. The others are, uh, you know, I was when you when you get a habit, I mean, a, an addiction of playing football, your passions are so and your dreams are so concentrated. I didn't go to a single football game at KU because I wanted to be on the field. Um, I uh, pledged one uh, uh, fraternity. And during that time, we had a prank. And the prank was uh, to broadcast um, outside the uh, seniors' uh, windows. Well, who better to do that than somebody in radio? And uh, so I did. Unfortunately, the speakers were too loud. They would be used for a rock concert today. And they woke the neighborhood up. And uh, we were picked up, went to jail. And um, so one of the most uh, <clears throat> memorable was uh, I was sitting in jail, and here was a habitual criminal next to him who leans over in his uh, uh, blurry eye. I woke him up, and he said... Uh, Okay, kid, what you in for? And I thought, oh my God, <laughs> I'm in jail. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm innocent, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got we got out the same day, and the dean of students um, was feeling good that day. I guess did not uh, kick us out. Uh, felt it was too <laughs> too minor an infraction. And from that time on, <laughs> I have never gotten in jail again. I have done 500 documentaries, most of them criminal law. <laughs> Man, and, and sat in on these mass murder trials. Um, but I never wanted to go in mm -mm. again. Yeah, no, that, that sounds like a 
wake up experience that <laughs> just oh my you can learn from everything <laughs> you really can I, I, you can find um, everything on the campus did you ever want to go to a, do you want to go to a football game now that we're like good or do you, like, <laughs> you watch it now that you're winning every game i'm, I'm waiting for the sooners uh having developed a hatred um because they beat us so badly uh average score was 40 to something oh yes somewhere along the line when i traveled a lot as a correspondent uh, we and then uh came back uh, upon sort of my 30 years at uh, cbs news started my own production company and uh, i visited the uh, uh campus uh, a number of times tried to stay in touch with the journalism school and um uh 500 documentaries i've narrated a thousand yeah. uh, i've been uh, we've done climate change in every country in south america uh, before it was hot and uh, before uh al gore invented the internet <laughs> and so and, and then i graduated uh, or maybe went the lower road uh, to a and e and started uh, i think i can claim that uh the documentary age the golden age of documentaries on cable tv oh, just to, we've taken up a lot of time already is there any advice you want to give to ku students just that are up and coming that are hoping to make it in this industry in the broadcast industry yes well do what i did <laughs> and that is you know be be studious uh and you can learn from a book and from lectures if you allow yourself to become absorbed in it so be serious about it but also if you want to be on the air uh you have to work at it uh you're a kind of singer in which you are exercising your vocal cords that's a muscle almost every day and you know people will come to me and they're 50 years old and said geez I, how can i make my voice uh deeper and i'll say you missed the boat at a young age, you, it's like uh, working out. You, know, you need to work those muscles and maintain a regimen through life. I remember, and be serious about it, I remember uh, in my apartment uh, that I was sharing with a roommate, and uh, I got up in the morning and he would still be sleeping, and uh, I would do some vocal exercises uh, that singers go through, and they <clears throat> sound really goofy. Um, but you're you're exercising your voice low a uh, series of um um oh um oh um, and high 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 so you're developing your range and you stay at that and uh you either go to the mental health uh, clinic or uh you stick <laughs> with it with your exercise regimen but um pick up every experience that you can because that experience will help you later on uh and stay with you and you'll remember i remember uh you know instances uh, standing on the stage at oak auditorium oh another. and um we were asked to do stand up let's say and bruce linton was watching and so i i crossed my arms you know in a kind of a relaxed way and he said you know crossing the arms uh makes you look arrogant and kind of salty and i've never crossed my arms again so you never know what you're going to learn and pick up in the debate um on campus i learned to prepare my notes have a pre uh, determined uh, little pitch uh, and not do very well <laughs> well clearly those vocal lesson vocal exercises work because you have one of the most memorable voices of all time especially that voice that you use for anchorman with will ferrell um so thank you so much for taking time out of your day and talking with me um i really appreciate it so thank you so much well uh before you go and something that cal will probably cut out um the the anchorman experience was uh unique and um people will ask me that wherever you know we're 
performing with Wait, Wait. And uh, I always have to say, have you ever heard these words, even though it's been more than 10 years since the movie, uh, you know, appeared? There was a time, a time before cable, when only men read the news. People believed everything they heard on television. And in San Diego, that man was Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> 